Noah and I were heading out on a 10-day canoe trip, and we invited Jesse and Jasmine to come along. We made a quick stop at Algonquin Base Camp in the town of Kearney to get some local knowledge from Chris and to pick up a canoe for Jesse and Jasmine to use for the trip. We were heading into the park at Access Point 2, the Tim River. I had gone into the park from this point in the past, but as a personal rule, I always make a point to chat with local park staff and outfitters when visiting an area. I found their local knowledge of water levels and wildlife activity to be incredibly valuable and I've learned to really value his guidance over the years. From there, we'd head to Access 2, the Tim River, and begin our 100-kilometer trip into the interior of Algonquin and down to Canoe Lake. The Tim River is located north of Kearney and is a great put-in point to access the northwest region of the park. The Tim winds its way over to Tim Lake and then continues to wind to Rosebury Lake. The maps of this route warn that the Tim can be difficult later in the season with low water levels and beaver dams. But with the high rainfall levels we've been having this year, I decided to take advantage of the situation and travel this route that I'd probably otherwise avoid. The first part of the Tim River from the access point to Tim Lake is an easy paddle and only takes around 45 minutes to reach Tim Lake. Tim Lake itself offers several nice campsites, and in fact, Tim Lake is a spot that I often recommend to people thinking about trying out their first canoe camping trip. On this trip, we'd be pushing past Tim Lake and onward to Rosebury Lake. For us, it would be about a five hour paddle to reach a campsite on Rosebury. Okay, so we're at the 120 meter portage on the Tim River, and uh, yeah, how's it going so far? Um, I think it's been going well. The rain is being a bit annoying. There's like rain off and on, which isn't great, but it's not been too bad. A lot of wind, which is also annoying, but mostly in our favor. So yeah, it's going fine, I think. Yeah, at least the wind's been behind us, pushing us, Yeah. so it's been good. Um, yeah, so the 120 meter portage, it's like a small fall, so, but anyway, no choice, but we have to go around it. Back in the canoes, the Tim River really narrows after the portage. And from there to Rosebury Lake, the twists and turns become almost extreme and can feel a bit overwhelming to new paddlers. It's an area that'll really demonstrate the importance of working together in a canoe and can quickly remove the belief that only the person at the back of the canoe is responsible for steering the boat.
Beaver dams can be another challenge along the way, and travelers through the stretch should be prepared to get their feet wet. For me, it's challenges like these that make me feel like I'm becoming more skilled at wilderness travel. And it also gives me hope that I'm exploring further away from those who might not be willing to do the same. I like that about canoe tripping, being able to challenge myself and push further away from others. And the rewards are often found when I find a more remote place where it's quieter, the fishing might be better, and there's often a greater chance of seeing the wildlife of the area. Along the Tim near Rosebury Lake, moose can often be seen eating the lilies and reeds or just cooling off on a hot day. Rosebury Lake was our first destination, and we'd spend the night and the next day on Rosebury to give ourselves a chance to rest and soak in the fact that we were finally in the park. Rosebury Lake leads to Longbow Lake where there's another short portage. From there, we would be back on the Tim River for the next two days until we reach Blue Lake. Being back on the Tim continued to challenge us with endless twists and turns, beaver dams and fallen trees. Noah was 15 now and had been paddling with me for a few years. His experience was really starting to show on this trip as we easily maneuvered around the bends and tight turns of the Tim. At the portages, he was carrying his own weight and was a big help to carry on through the day. For me, having him here was one of the most important parts of the trip. And even though it wasn't always easy, I hope you'll look back on the times like this that we spent together and think of them as good memories. At the end of the day, being able to relax and have a filling meal was important. 
I've been packing Mountain House MREs for a few years now, and I find them a great way to have a quick meal. The Tim River continued to twist and turn until finally widening near Shipagoo Lake. It was good to feel a bit more out in the open and less confined by the banks of the river. Okay, so we finished our Tim River section, and behind me is uh, Lake Shipagoo, and now we're at the portage. It's a 1,000 meter portage from Shipagoo Lake to Blue Lake, and we'll be staying the night on Blue Lake. Today we're having a rest day at Blue Lake. Um, it's a good thing we're not out there now because it's been raining all day. Uh, we've been keeping busy. I'm reading a book. They've been playing cards and stuff. So yeah, it's a nice way to just relax a bit and recover from yesterday's heavy portage. After a day of rest on Blue Lake, we were on our way again. I knew everyone could be tired after the long days on the Tim River, so this section would be a short, easier day traveling from Blue Lake to Big Trout Lake. We're on Big Trout Lake now. Uh, we woke up this morning, we were still on Blue Lake, and it was just a short paddle to the portage. Portage was 840 meters. It's a pretty typical portage. Uh, still very damp and lots of mosquitoes, uh, but you know, like I said, pretty typical. Uh, then we got onto Big Trout and the wind was coming from behind, so helped us uh, along. The waves did get kind of rough. We had white caps and some pretty big waves as we were paddling, but uh, other than a little bit of water that we took into the canoe, we did fairly well. So we got to a really nice campsite up on a rocky hill and we've got a beautiful view. So, you know, hopefully the weather holds out for us and uh, yeah, we're a little bit more than halfway through the trip, but things are going pretty good. Algonquin Park really is a special place. Among the paddling community, most people agree that it's one of the best areas to visit. Located perfectly in central Ontario, it's a convenient wilderness area that can be easily reached by most people in the province. The funny thing is, within the paddling community, there's also a weird opinion that some paddlers have. That Algonquin is a place with a lot of portages and a lot of people. It's true, there are a lot of portages in the park, but I don't share the opinion about the crowds. Once you get away from the popular Highway 60 corridor and get out to the more remote access points on the north, east, and west sides of the park, it's a much more secluded setting. In fact, so far on this trip, we hadn't encountered another person since we arrived. We just left our very nice campsite at Big Trout Lake. It was, the views were amazing, a lot of room, just, yeah, just really nice. Um, it was a bit of a cold night, but we managed to compensate that with a nice hot shower, which felt good after seven days in the, in the wild. 
So now we're at the portage to Otter Slide Creek. Uh, portage is 105 meters and it's right beside a, a very nice waterfall, small waterfall, but obviously you can't go up it. Well, we made it to Little Otter Slide Lake. Uh, the trip down was surprisingly kind of long. Like in kilometers, it isn't, but there's a lot of portages. There are five portages along the way. Uh, the longest was only 500 meters, and the rest were under that. But just, you know, it's getting in and out of the canoe. And uh, because it's been a 10 day trip, we have to actually, for our portages, we have to walk them twice because all of the gear. We don't have tons of gear, but. Uh, you know, it's just, it's the food that we brought in and, uh, you know, the th we have three tents and all that. So there's just a lot of gear to carry. Um, Otter Slide Lake was really nice. And actually the Otter Slides were nice. Um, you know, rapids at every uh, portage. So you get a bit of a look at that as you go. Nice area. Otter Slide Lake was very pretty and Little Otter Slide also really nice. Um, really nice calm night as you can see behind me and uh, what else uh, the otter slide creek that runs down between otter slide lake and little otter slide uh, there was a, a bull moose in the creek uh, just I guess whatever cooling off eating some lilies and so that was neat to see um, we got probably within I don't know 40 feet of them and then he decided that he wasn't going to share the creek with us and out he went but yeah good day all overall and yeah once the sun goes down I'll definitely be ready for some bedtime
we're on the portage now from Burnt Island Lake to Little Doe Lake. It's a 1400 meter portage, so not really looking forward to it. But the weather's been really nice today, and our other portage earlier, the weren't too many bugs. Okay, so we've made it to Tom Thompson Lake today. Uh, what was the other lake we went through? Little Doe? Yes, a Little Doe, I think. Yeah, through Little Doe, and we had that big 1,400 meter portage. What'd you think of the portage? Uh, it was better groomed than the others. Saw more use, so it was a bit flatter, but uh, up and down all the same, and muddy. Lots of mud throughout it. Yeah. A lot more people down at this end of the park as well. So having started up at access point two, it was a lot quieter. And now that we're down here, we see people up at like the Tim River that we didn't see anybody at all. And now there's, yeah, lots of people. But it's a nice lake though, eh, Tim? Or Tom Thompson Lake, it's nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's big and flat. Yeah, nice island across from us. So be good for the night. Okay, so today's the last day of the trip. We're still out on Tom Thompson Lake, uh, where last night we had a bit of excitement as a black bear came through camp and wandered over to the next site over. Um, the plan for today is to paddle over to Canoe Lake, and that'll be the end of the journey. After an event-filled night, we set out to complete the last part of our 100-kilometer trip that took us from Access Point 2 down to Access Point 6. We paddled our way from Tom Thompson Lake to Canoe Lake, where Noah and I took a moment to stop and check out the memorial to the Canadian artist Tom Thompson. The 25-foot totem pole and cairn are a memorial to the artist who drowned on Canoe Lake 100 years ago. It was a nice end to our journey through the park 
And I think in addition to seeing this memorial to the famous artist, it also gave us a new sense of the history of the park and how it's an important place in Canada to so many people and for so many different reasons.